Good morning, GP, and welcome to another day of Sunday at Home. We're so glad that each and every one of you guys are joining us for our service. Now, wherever you are, get yourself ready for worship. Get out of your bed, find your Sunday space, put on your Sunday best, and let's focus and let's worship God together. You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours can have it all, Lord, every part of my world, and take this life and breathe on, this life that is now yours. And oh, the joy I found Surrendering my crown At the feet of the King Who surrendered everything Call and give. 
All right, I just want to point out um, today, especially, I want to recognize our seniors of 2020. Now understand there has been a lot of change since all of this corona pandemic has happened, but I just want to congratulate and to recognize each and every one of you guys for our graduating 2020 students. Congratulations, you've made it, you've graduated, and you guys are moving on to far greater and bigger things in this life. So I just want to say uh, um, congratulations. I'm so sorry that we couldn't have a senior banquet or we couldn't have our senior trip, but I promise we'll make it up to you in one way or another. Uh, so let me pray for you guys as we launch you out into this crazy, crazy world this week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time and opportunity that we can recognize and to congratulate our seniors. Uh, Lord, we understand that the circumstances of this world has been crazy uh, and a lot of things has been taken away from our students. Uh, graduation, their senior trip, a senior banquet. Uh, Lord, but in whatever cases, in any circumstances, we recognize that no matter how difficult the circumstances can be, there's one thing that is never taken away from us, is that your presence and you yourself given onto us. So we continue to pray for our seniors as they launch out into this world, whether it's work or school or staying home and going to school, in whatever obstacles that you continue to present yourself and to be with our seniors in every step of the way. And Lord, we continue to pray for each and every one of our seniors that they continue to fulfill their life and into living and loving like you did in this world. All of these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So congratulations once again, seniors of 2020. Um, all the rest of you guys, please make sure you guys congratulate our seniors as we launch them out officially from GPM. All right, thanks for joining us once again, GPM. Uh, last week, we started a new series called Mission Impossible. We talked, um, we looked at what it meant to be agents of God here on this world, to carry out and to fulfill His mission. The mission was very simple, to love God and to live like God, and to show and to continue to teach and share the gospel of the good news to others around us. And sometimes we feel like that mission seems so impossible to us. But last week we took a look that no, it, you know, we don't, we don't have to wear disguises as these agents of Christ. We don't have to make fake stories. We don't have to um, fake our relationship with God. But rather, it's in our realness as we are real with our neighbors, as we are real with God, as we are real with ourselves. That's when the mission of God is truly carried out in our life. And so I gave you a challenge to be real with your parents, your siblings, uh, whoever you are around, and to show God's love to them. Uh, this week, we're going to carry on with that theme of carrying on God's mission here on earth. But before we do that, uh, one of the favorite memories I have of preschool, well, well, elementary school, is show and tell. Right? Every week I would wait until that Friday of the month where we would have show and tell. And we would have this roster going down and then each student, um, I think we had two or three students come up doing show and tell and I could not wait for my turn. Uh, but I distinctly remember one day, one of my teachers, right? teachers also had show and tell, he brought in his pet snake. Right? It was the first time I encountered a snake up close uh, and I was able to touch it and like feel it and play with it. And it. It was amazing. But the thing about show and tell, right, is that you have to show 
and then tell about the item. What if we had show and tell, but the only thing I did was show and not tell, right? Or how about what if I only told but not showed? Like the item that I have in my pocket right now. Well, let me describe it to you. It's pointy, it's colorful, uh, it represents something in this world. How, how good is that kind of show and tell? Or if I actually just showed you the item, uh, but I never told you anything about it, what this is, where it came from, you know, why I have it, and whose it actually belongs to, right? Uh, that's not show and tell. The, the core essence of show and tell is to bring an item and to show it and to tell your friends about the item, why it means so much to you and why it's special to you and why you have it. And in order for us to have a successful show and tell, uh, not just in terms of bringing items and talking about it, but rather what we communicate and what we show, we need to do both. What we say needs to line up with what we do, and what we do needs to line up with what we say. Now think about a time when you know somebody, or, or maybe yourself, who said something, but your action didn't follow through. Or maybe the opposite way, all right? You did something, but you never really communicated that action. Um, just now I told Pastor Rachel, uh, I love you. And then she was like, you know, it's easy just to say it. Why don't you show it to me? Right? Likewise, um, show and tell. We, in order to communicate our ideas and to communicate our heart to our friends, our neighbors around us, we need to both show and we need to tell. And that's the case with the mission of God as well. In Matthew chapter 28, God tells us to go out into this world because all authority is given unto Jesus and now He's commanding us to go to love and live like Him, right? To share the gospel of God, uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to others around us. And if we're only saying the love of Christ and not showing, right, then what good is it? Or what if we only show, right, the love of God and not actually share the message what good would it do for our neighbors? All right, I want to introduce you guys to a new word today, and that's evangelism, right? And maybe for some of you guys, you guys heard this term used a lot, evangelism, evangelize, evangelist. It's a type of Christianese. We say it a lot, but we really don't know what it means. Uh, at the root core of the word is to actually give or to share good news. Evangelism is to share the good news with other people. An evangelist shares that good news with other people. Right? It's a Greek word and, and, and like it says, it's sharing the good news of God. And the thing about evangelism is when we go outside and we start evangelizing, people might have a different preconception about that word or that idea. And like we talked about last week, when there was a survey about Christians and how we view Christians and one word that describes Christian, usually hypocrisy. And how could we evangelize and we say the words but yet not show the love of God to others around us? And that is the mission of God and that is our core message today. So turn with me to Luke chapter 10 verse 1 to 9. Luke chapter 10 verse 1 to 9. Let me read this to you guys. After this, the Lord appointed seventy-two others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord for the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into the harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. And do not take purse or bags or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. And when you enter a house, say first, Peace to this house. And if someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking wherever they give you, and for the work deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. And when you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you, and heal the sick who are there, and to tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. Now, before Jesus sent his disciples out into the Great Commandment, he actually sent his disciples out on a separate mission as well. Now, interesting to know, as we just read, 
right? He talks less about what to say about the God or the good news of God, but rather he tells them, what does he tell them? To go into their home, to be hospitable, right? To build long-term relationships and to live, uh, live with those people. Jesus didn't just tell his disciples to go into these communities and talk about the good news of God. He actually wanted them to go there and to build relationship with these people. And it's through these building relationship with these people, they are doing show and tell, right? Not only are they sharing and telling about the love of God, but by their actions, they are showing the love of God to them. All right, let's get a little bit more specific then. How do we actually show the love of God, right? Well, uh, we know how to tell them, right? We just tell them God loves you. But what about show? How do we actually show love? Well, I think today I want to focus on we want to be helpful. We want to build positive influence. We want to influence others for benefit, for good, right? And how do we do that? By our action, we influence them, we build their trust. Right? We value them. Right? With our action, we lift them up. With our words, we value them. Right? We give them valuable, uh, well, we, we say valuable things to them. Right? Make them feel valued. And by our action, right, we make them feel valued. And as we value other people more than we value ourselves, right, that's when we start building credit, when trust is built. And that's one way that we could actually start showing people the love of God. And as we continue to value others, we're going to start building trust and we could start influencing them. Think about it. Who do you listen to? Right? Who do you trust? Do you just trust and listen to a random stranger that comes up to you? Or do you listen to your coach, your teacher, or maybe some of you guys, your parents, or a friend that you trust, like an older friend? right because those people have over the years over the time have built influence and built trust in you they valued you therefore their words are valuable and that's why we can trust them and we could listen to them likewise in order for us to not only tell the love of God but to show the love of God is to value other people and as we grow in our trust and influence with them we let them know how much God loves them and how much we love them as well. All right, so let's take this one step further. How can we show the love of God this week? Well, very simple. All you got to do is perform CPR, right? CPR, C, we care for our neighbors. P, we pray for our neighbors. And R, we respond to our neighbors. First of all, we can't love somebody if we don't care about them. Unless we can't see what they're experiencing and to feel what they're experiencing and to give our time and energy towards them, there's absolutely no way we could be helpful to them. For number one, we got to care for them. Number two, we need to pray for them. Before we even think about acting or think about ways that we could be helpful to our neighbors, we need to be praying for them. Why? Because unless God helps us in this mission, we are bound to fail in it and are respond. Right? We thought about it, we prayed about it, we cared about it. Now we got to put our words into action. Think about ways, brainstorm ways that we could respond and to help and to love our neighbor. CPR. It's very simple to show the love of God and to tell the love of God to our neighbors today. So GPM, I challenge you this week, perform CPR to your neighbors. Right? Not that kind, of, but you know what I mean. Perform CPR to your siblings, to your um, your mothers and fathers, uh, people that you live around. Especially in this age, like I said, we're getting kind of friction with each other. Let's let's show them the love of God. That even though they are annoying, even though we're on edge with one another, let's show them. Let's tell them the love of God. That even if this world is changing, like everything is changing that God remains the same, that He loves us no matter what. So GPM, let's continue to show love to those around us. Now, maybe some of you guys are thinking, well, you know, you know, joining God in this mission, I don't feel ready, I don't feel confident. How could I make that step to show love and not just tell love about God? Well, um, think about this. Think about this deflated balloon is your influence to your neighbors, your friends, whoever it is around you. 
right? Maybe you just haven't actually shown them that you care about them or you value them yet. But here's the thing. The more we value others and the more we value our friend, our influence grows. And as our influence grows, the more likely they will listen to us and as we share the gospel with them. So the next time you hear a friend who's having a hard day, encourage them, value them, and you're going to grow their influence or grow your influence with them. Uh, maybe you have a hard day and you have a fight with your parents, reach out, apologize and grow that relationship together and value them and you're going to grow your influence with them. Whatever it is, uh, as we grow our influence and to value others around us, we're going to grow our influence with them. And as we do so, they are more and more likely to listen as we tell them about the love of God uh, to them, right? So, GPM, this week, let's not just be tellers, right? let's not just tell the good news to people around us, but let's show them with love the good news and the love of God to our neighbors around us. Let me pray and let's wrap up our service. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time and opportunity as we continue to explore your word, as you continue to invite us into your mission to love and to live like you did. Lord, we understand that sometimes it's so hard to just uh, show other people love and to show them that we value them. But we ask that the Holy Spirit continue to help us to do that this week. Uh, as we continue to do so, let our influence grow with them. Let our trust grow with our neighbors that we could continue to show and to tell them the love of God. Lord, thank you so much for this time and opportunity and all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.